for this What's Neat this week, it's June. And Joe Steinman, I want you to know, has come up with a concept that needs to be talked about. Rather than oil paint weathering the traditional way with oil paints and a brush, which has always allowed the imperfections of crooked streaks that could ruin the model, Joe has come up with an idea. All of these freight cars have been modeled and weathered with the idea of weathering solutions, new idea of decals. Rather than pulling your oil paint weathering using real oils and a brush, now it can be absolutely foolproof by using straight decals with it. But simply by taking straight different variations, colors of streaks, you can even get up underneath your handrails, underneath the roof walks, something that we could never do with a brush and get right and get straight every time. So for this What's Neat this week, I really think that it's worth talking about weathering solutions, new way to weather, where the novice and the beginner can have quality, contest looking freight cars simply in a matter of hours by using these decals. I'm going to let Joe explain it in his own words and we'll show you how to go about doing this. For this June, what's neat this week. Hi, I'm Joe Steinman. I'm the creator of Weathering Solutions. And today we're going to do a What's Neat This Week on Weathering Solutions. And you may be asking yourself, what is Weathering Solutions? Well, going back about eight years ago, I was in the middle of uh, weathering a bunch of cars, and I said, God, there's got to be an easier way of doing this. And I came up with this concept of do the artwork one time and reproduce it to, to build your fleet up of weathering, weathering cars. So these models were done by Mike Morrison, and this will just give you an, an idea of what, um, what we have going on here. What we've came up with is uh, all sorts of different weathering effects for model railroading. And it doesn't matter if you are a in-scale model railroader. We've got uh, decals for uh, small, medium, and large. And you can do just about anything from in-scale to G scale to O scale. Okay? So kind of getting behind the the decals themselves, I had been in model railroading for many years and never really got into prototypical running. One day I was invited to come down to Ken Patterson's and see what he has going on down here and it kind of inspired me to to take my modeling to the next level. That's whenever I started getting into the oil based uh, weathering with uh, powders, oils, acrylics, you name it, um, dirt from the driveway, wherever. So wanting to bring my models to the next level, I, uh, I started doing uh, different types of, of uh, railroad cars, locomotives and so forth, and I came up with the idea of why not reproduce the weathering effect one time and then I'm able to reproduce that several different ways and several different times to to create you know my whole entire fleet of, of uh, model railroad. So what this allows people to do is for the average Joe or the beginner or advanced modeler what it allows them to do is it, it allows them to take a car and either put a wash on it do some fades however they want to do it use our decals and they can have a competition ready model within 24 hours and it's really with today's technology the way that uh, we're able to print these is it really does create a, a very prototypical look and it allows the beginners to now step up their modeling to a, a sense of, of being able to to produce something that's of show quality. We also have graffiti and um, the reason it sets us apart from all the other graffiti um, let's say manufacturers is our graffiti we actually print down a white background first then we're able to do color on top of that and with our color we can do transitions, we can do fades, we can do stuff that nobody else can do. And our decals literally are taken from um, 
prototype photographs from real rail cars. So anything that you get from Weathering Solutions will have that prototypical uh, look to it. Heck, I like using them because it, it takes the guesswork out of it. You're able to get that rust streak exactly vertical. And All right, to give you an example, um, we went down to uh, downtown St. Louis to do a photo shoot. And I had all these cars lined up to do a photo shoot. I took the pictures. I actually I posted them on Facebook under Weathering Solutions. And Ken, he, basically, he, he sends a comment back and, and said, nice photos of the, the real train cars. And my response was, Ken, I took these pictures. They're HO scale. So by me fooling Ken Patterson, I think <laughs> this is a... Uh, Testimonial. This is a testimonial of how realistic these are. Ken, did I not fool you? I thought they were absolutely real. I saw them on Facebook. I said, great hunting, Joe. You got some great Ichabod shots. And you came back at me and said, Ken, these are models. And my jaw dropped. What you've got is a good product. I think it's really worth showing the rest of the modelers out there the effort that you've done because it's going to pay off. The average guy can weather overnight with your product with striking contest quality results. You've made it easy for all of us now to be professionals. For a minute I want to talk about tripod heads. For about 15 years I've used this tripod head that fit right on top of my Bogan tripod. It's a three-handled head they still make them, they still manufacture them. I've actually worn this one out to the point where it will not stay steady anymore. It's just, it's literally worn out. But recently I switched tripod heads to what's a one handle type of a head. These things are actually really great for modeling, for shooting model photos, simply because it's a one handle, you look through the camera, you're able to adjust all ways by simply squeezing the trigger and then releasing and the head stays right where you want it to stay. Jeff also uses this type of a head it's, a, it's more of a vertical type head, same principle, but it's, it's really handy in that you only squeeze the lever one time, position the camera exactly where you want it, release, and you've got your shot set up just by a one-handed operation rather than twisting three knobs to set up your photograph. It's actually a lot easier, and I'd suggest you guys, if you start shooting model pictures outside or indoors, invest in one of these types of head. I think you're gonna find that it'll make your photography jobs a lot easier to do with good results. What you shooting today, Jeff? Uh, just a <clears throat> new freight car I finished recently. It uh, wasn't really based on a prototype, but it's an ex-Burlington Northern Waffle Side box car. Sold to Montana Rail Link, and they had a lot of a lot of cars they bought off the BN that had pretty bad paint failures, where the blue paint basically just washed right off the car. That's nice. So, yeah, I tempered my, like I said, not based on a prototype, kind of a test bed on how to do the technique. Very nice. It's a good day to shoot today. <laughs>